Pastor Grace here, and I'm so excited for you to join us this week. I'm having an awesome week. Even though stuff doesn't seem really good or even feel really good, I'm having an awesome week because I have joy in my heart. And joy helps us have an attitude of gratitude. That's what we're going to learn this week. But you know what? I think I need a friend to help me. I wonder who it's going to be this week. Hmm. Let me call somebody. Let me try calling my little turkey. Who's going to help me? Oh. What, what, what's that? What's wrong? That's not a turkey call. It's not? Okay, well, <clears throat> let me try again. Hey, it's my littlest turkey. Hey, what's wrong? You look a little bit sad. Yeah, I'm sad. Why? Because Dad's working in the basement in Zoe's room, but he doesn't have any time for my room. Oh, so you have a sad attitude. You know what, Georgia? I'm glad you're here today because boy, do we have a story to tell you about how you can find joy and gratitude in the midst of difficult situations. Should we get ready? I think we need to look in the Word of God. Hey, do you know what that means? Get your swords! <laughs> Whoa, I got ours. Awesome. Now, Georgia, we're in the Old Testament, boys and girls, in Exodus 16. And you know what's amazing about this story? The Israelites, God's chosen people, his BFFs, they were even complaining about, about what God was doing. They had attitudes too. And you know what? God really provided for them. He got them out of Egypt. He helped them across the Red Sea. And just in the chapter before, it writes about how God provided them water when they were very thirsty. And they got to a place where they were very hungry. And this is the story about what happens. Hey, think we should get ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll see you in two seconds. Okay, we're back. Now, God's people sure complained in the desert of sure about not having any water, but God provided. And now they had reached the desert of sin. And they're going to complain some more, which is a sin. <laughs> the Israelites, they started to complain against Moses and Aaron, and they started grumbling. We should have stayed in Egypt. There was food there. I miss my chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah, they thought that Moses and Aaron now had brought them into the desert to starve. So they started complaining. So the Lord told Moses and Aaron that he's gonna send food for them. He's actually gonna rain down food from heaven. He's gonna send quail or meat for them to eat at night. And in the morning when they wake, there'll be this food called manna. Do you know what manna is? Um, not really. What is it? <laughs> well, the people of Israel actually called it, what is it? Because when they first looked at it, that's what they said, what is it? And what is it in their language actually means manna. That's like you guys calling your breakfast cereal. What is it? Maybe that's a new cereal we can create. Manna was actually something that kind of looked like, um, it was white, like coriander seeds. It was sweetened with honey and it was baked with kind of like olive oil. So it kind of looked like maybe corn flakes, slash marshmallows, slash it disintegrated by that hot afternoon sun. So God actually told them, only collect what you need for the day. Some people tried to keep it and it actually went all maggoty and gross. God said, I will give you this day your daily bread. He told us to collect what we need. God wants to take care of us. He has a plan. And that's what the people of Israel didn't understand. For six days, he told them to gather what they needed. And on day six, he actually said, I'm gonna give you enough that you gather everything you need on the sixth day, and then you'll have enough to rest on the seventh, on the Sabbath. And that day, it didn't go maggoty at all. It stayed perfectly because God has a plan. And if you obey him, he'll work out things for the circumstances that you need. Now you see, Moses was able to help the people and he gave it to them and they still grumble. Yeah. 
You know, we need to have an attitude of gratitude. God provided their daily needs. Actually, he provided the manna for 40 years when they were in the desert. What? 40 years? Yeah, could you imagine? That's like eating Cheerios for breakfast every day for the next 40 years. I can do that. But instead of Cheerios, could it be pizza? <laughs> well, maybe. But you know what? God wants us to think about the blessings that we already have. Even though God provides us with food and water and shelter, when we don't feel like things are going our way, sometimes we start to grumble. Grumble, grumble, grumble. You know, um, I think we need to go back to Pastor Grace in Georgia and finish this lesson. See you soon. Hey guys, we're back. Um, thanks, Georgia. What did you think about those Israelites? They were kind of mean. Well, mean and grumbling. They had sadatudes. Now, you know what? When you get a sadatude, it's because you forget all the blessings that you have. And in order to have a good attitude, you need to have an attitude of gratitude. You know what? The Israelites, if they would have just given thanks to God because he's good and his love endures forever, that would have been enough. Do you know that verse? Psalms 136 verse 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Friends, that's why we should have an attitude of gratitude. And you know what? Sometimes when things don't go your way, you got to remember the good things we have. We are very, very blessed. In order to have an attitude of gratitude, you actually need to give thanks in all circumstances. Hmm, let's think about this for a minute. So you said you're sad because your dad is working on your sister's room mm -hmm. and you want him to work on your room? Yep. So what's the blessings in that? You're getting a new room. That's a big blessing, something you can be thankful for. What are some other blessings in that? Uh... You're growing up, you get to have a room upstairs. Hmm, what about the fact that you even have a room in a house? Or the fact that you don't have to share a room with your brothers and sisters? Or what about the fact that you have new bedding? Or what about the fact that you have more space to play in and live in? Right? Yeah. When we have an attitude of gratitude for the things we have, we recognize how blessed we are. Boys and girls, in 1 Thessalonians 5.16, it says rejoice always, pray continually. And then it says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. Can you do that? You know what? Count down with me. Five, four, three, two, one. Heavenly Father, thank you for our many blessings. Lord, we recognize how blessed we are, and sometimes we forget because things don't go how we plan. Just like the Israelites in the desert, Lord, you provided for them and you provide for us every day. Father, we just pray that we would help to recognize what you've given us, how you've blessed us so mightily, and that we would share our blessings with those in need, that we would be the blessing in someone else's life, that you would increase our attitudes of gratitude in this time because jesus we are so blessed thank you for everything you've given us for our families for our homes that are warm for the food we eat for the clothing we, we wear jesus that you would continue to provide our daily bread our needs and that we would recognize that you are the greatest gift giver in jesus name amen boys and girls we are so blessed and we hope that you remember to get rid of your attitude. You need an attitude of gratitude. Well, I guess that's all we have for today. So until next time, God, God bless ya.